ongoing high somatic cell counts, high rates of mastitis in cows and heifers, and little success in controlling either, led Manawa 2 farm manager Kevin Cooper to seek specialist help. Will Tully, a senior practicing vet at the Farm Services Clinic at Massey University, was called in. After careful analysis, Will recommended a number of steps involving health therapies and animal management. The result was that clinical infection rates halved and average somatic cell counts dropped by 40%. We total milk by 50 cows here. We've got about 192 hectare milking platform and probably a third of the cows, maybe 200, are milked through the winter. I thought by the time probably October come, you know, they'd start kind of petering off and that, but we still was getting probably three to four cases um, a week. Um, we stripped the herd each week, but it was just kind of like an ongoing problem, and I knew myself that it was just out of the norm. The counts weren't too bad. They were, they were around probably the 200,000, 220 then. That was all right, but it was in the following, just after Christmas, January, February, when they really started spiking and really started going up. And I just knew then that we needed to do something about it. So I approached our owners and they put us in touch with Will Tully from Massey University. We found that a lot of our mastitis was after calving. And we found too that a lot of our two-year-olds got infected as well. The first thing we did was all the high somatic cell counts, a million plus, we marked them and they were all milked last. When it comes to actually calving in the autumn, March, instead of mixing our freshly calved cows with our spring cows that were infected the previous 2012, 2013 spring, we actually kept them separate. And we kept them separate right till we actually dried them off. Very committed to teat selling in the heifers. Um, I was real skeptical about that um, when they first um, did it, but I've never done it before. But going from probably 25 cases out of 80 in the heifers in the spring, I went to probably four cases out of the 100 this year. It was a, a really significant um, drop in the heifers. Go, go. I mean, the main thing, Kevin, is just, just to be as clean as possible, really. And you've got to try and, try and be go, go. absolutely spotless. The farm had a lot of clinical cases of mastitis. The cell count was reasonable, about 250,000, so higher than ideal, but not, not at a level that was directly costing them money through grading. We always tend to follow the same approach, which is start off with the data, so really get a good idea of where we actually are. So this farm's very good. Obviously, we've got all the um, just heard cell count data. Kevin had been very, very thorough, recorded all the cases of clinical mastitis. So we could use their records by doing that to really target where the problem was, because although we were we were mid-season, um, we could go back, we could look at the records, and we could see that the vast majority of the clinical mastitis cases were actually coming about in the first month of lactation, which, all right, there were a few later on. It wasn't perfect, but the big, big driver of mastitis on the farm was the dry period and around calving. So that led us on to, to go through. We used the Smart Sam um, mastitis checklist. So we did about three visits to the farm to assess the milking process, look at the environment, see how the guys and the cows were interacting. Um, and that led us to make the recommendations that we did make. We did quite a number of milk samples. Kevin, again, had been good. He'd collected about a dozen samples already. Um, we did some more from fresh clinical cases. We did some chronically high cell count cows, and they're all coming back as Streptococcus hubris. And all, all the evidence, certainly in New Zealand, is that strep hubris is, is an environmental pathogen. And so that, yeah, that fits with what we're seeing from the epidemiology and the numbers. So obviously it's vital with these cows, particularly in this herd, when we're not drying everything off at the, at the same time, that we have them well marked so they don't go back in the vat and we don't run the risk of getting an antibiotic grade. Culling is an important part of mastitis control and around Smart Sam there are targets for that and farmers should be culling some cows. It is one of the mainstays, particularly more chronic cows, particularly with your contagious bacteria. But the other thing we could do with this herd, because they've got good records, is we could look at how cows performed with their cell counts across the dry period. And there were a real hardcore of old cows that had been through a dry period and they just weren't getting better and you're just not going to cure those cows. And all the time they're in the herd, yet yeah, it's predominantly environmental, but they're still there as a risk to the rest of the herd. So there were some cows that just had to go that we weren't going to be able to fix by any other means. You can see that little dot of TCL right at the end. The basic tools, so we split our priorities down to things they could do straight away. So we weren't getting much spread through the shed at all, but we still, we went back, we looked at teat spraying again. 
We know the research in New Zealand says you can reduce your mastitis by about half, certainly that contagious spread, so volume of teat spray, concentration, application. Wearing gloves in the shed, and, and those were the main immediate control points. The big thing for us was, was around the dry period. So the herd the previous year, they'd only used antibiotic in about three quarters of the cows, and they'd never used teat seal. So looking at the patterns we'd got, we recommended whole herd antibiotic, and we also recommended whole herd teat seal, including teat seal in the heifers. It's particularly those spring calving heifers, a lot of those were infected when they calved in as well. Smart Sam is short for smart approach to minimizing mastitis. We encourage people to look for clinical mastitis by stripping quite frequently, but we also have a system called Mrs. T. Um, mark, record, separate and treat. So once they find a new case, they're asked to mark that cow with paint or whatever their system is that they use. They're asked to record the details, how the cow number and the date and the treatment they're going to use, separate her out from the main herd, from, from the milking herd, and then actually to treat her once all those steps have passed. Smart Sam is now recommending that at drying off, it is going to be better to protect every cow. So it's about using the right solution for that herd and that farm. At our fingertips, we have um, long-acting dry cow antibiotics, and we also have these uh, non-antibiotic uh, internal teat sealants. And so we, working with the vet, the farmer can work out what is the best approach for their farm. At the end of the day, mastitis is an everyday disease. Every person dealing with the cows on an everyday basis has to, has to be look, on the lookout for mastitis. So that's an important part of Healthy Udder, one of the resources that we have within the Smart Sound program, which helps people know how best to prevent, find and treat mastitis, how best to do those different tasks that happen day to day to prevent, find and treat mastitis. If you are struggling to get mastitis under control in your herd, Dairy NZ recommends contacting your vet to work out the right solution for your farm. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.